Uh, I started. You are. The recording has started. Go ahead, Justin. Okay, so here we are in SketchUp, and this is just SketchUp Make, the free version. Uh, when you start a new pile, you get uh, this gentleman here, uh, and if you don't want him in your drawing, just uh, left-click him, and you'll see a selection tool, and just delete him out of there. That way, he's not in your model. Um, we're going to go and use Scott's address. We'll go up to File, yeah. um, and we're going to go to Geolocation, and we're going to click on Add Location. Uh, once we do this, we'll see a, a map pop up now. I've already have Scott's uh, location that we were doing in here, but if you place any address in here, it will show you an overlay of uh, Google aerial imagery. And you just want to make sure that you're zoomed in to the maximum amount and uh, click the Select Region tool. And uh, you'll see here, and this allows you to drag this around a little bit. Uh, I found if you drag too much at times, it can cause a little bugginess, but uh, if you don't move stuff around too much, it should be okay. Uh, from there, we hit grab, and the computer will think for a second, and it will now uh, import into SketchUp a two-dimensional plane with the aerial imagery. Uh, there's the house right here, right at the origin point. Um, and then to convert this into terrain, we go to File, Geolocation, Show Terrain, and we now have the, uh, a terrain overlay, a mesh of the terrain. Uh, to import this into Chief, click your little selection tool here, uh, left click your terrain, you see a red uh, bounding box, and we're going to make this so that we can edit it and import it into Chief. So we have the red selection, we're going to right click on the box now, hit unlock, it'll turn blue. And then we once again we'll right click again and we'll hit explode. The now we have an actual exploded mesh of the property. Um, now we're just going to export this file, export 3D model, um, and we'll just export this as a quad file, which I seem to have the best luck uh, exporting uh, importing into Chief with quad files versus 3ds or whatever, but um, with the free version, we only have a couple options. It's Colada and KMT, so we don't really have a choice if you're running the free version. Uh, export. So that now is exported. So I'm going to start a new cheat file. And we're going to new plan. Oops, I did that. And now we're going to uh, import 3D symbol, 3DS, so on. We're going to find what we just did here, uh, which is our Kalata file. I just named it Untitled. Um, it's going to import it as a 3D symbol. You can save it as any number of things, fixture, interior, exterior. You can add it to your library, which may be something you want to do if you're going to be reusing it. Uh, hit OK. Uh, if you've done this before, it's going to tell you that it's uh, the, the JPEG already exists in your texture folder. It'll ask you to rename it. And uh, this comes in as just a regular symbol. Click on your model, and uh, there it is. So it doesn't look like much, but when we do a three-dimensional overview of it, you'll see that now we have a terrain model, which is visible in, uh, in standard view. It is not visible in vector view. In vector view, you just have a flat black plane. But in standard view, it, it lay, overlays the texture on it. Uh, from here, I like to have an idea of how you can interact with this, so I'm just going to the slab tool, and I'll draw a random slab here. I'll select the slab, open it up, I'll make it 900 inches thick, and I just know from working with this model before that uh, elevation 800 at the top should about put us where we can see it. I'll jump back to a 3D view, and now we have an intersection of our slab with the model. So I like to paint the slab with tile. I use uh, black tile with uh, solid tile, small grout lines, black tile. Hit OK. I spray paint it. And uh, what we have now is this really fine grid pattern. I use the little color selector thing. And uh, I change the scale of this to 24 by 24. 
and in the texture, I change the scale to 24. And you could use anything you want. You could use 12 by 12. Uh, I also like to make it semi-transparent. And uh, so I'll put the transparency at about 20 to 25. And uh, there we go. Now we have our model. And now you're working right within Sheep, so you can do the things that uh, make it a little easier. Zoom out, kind of rotate this, start sizing it to where you want it to go. And there you go. You can kind of see the – I'm a little wide there. But uh, you can see the interaction of the slope across the front of the lot, down the side. And you can use this any number of ways. You can create different objects to interact with the terrain. And, and uh, you can use it to measure. Um, like I was telling Scott, you know, on, on more aggressive lots, well, this actually is fairly aggressive. If you run out to the street here, you can get a really good idea there for what's going on topographically. So that's about it. Thank you very much. That was, uh, I forgot, that was Justin Travis. Thank you very much, Justin. No problem.